is not something which is just going to go away. So we are literally just parked up um, just at the uh, side entrance to the church. Look, this is, this is, this is Mike's car and here's the, in this parking space. Look where he's parked. Space reserved for a vicar. I'm sure Mike is a vicar, but you know. Um, but apparently she doesn't park in this space anyway. So we were, uh, Mike did clarify that and we are welcome to park here. So that's good. He is a gentleman. He does check these things before we just turn up. Hi, welcome to another Lewis Art video. Am I recording? Couldn't even remember if I pressed record. Hi, welcome to another Lewis Art video. Um, we're out at Wesley again today. Gradually, bit by bit, we're getting closer to the church in the churchyard, but we're just outside of it um, today. Mike's picked out a nice little spot for us to try and paint. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I just, uh, first of all, before we carry on, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's put comments in on the videos. Um, positive comments are really appreciated. And so is the uh, tips that we're getting and um, hints and tips that we're getting about different um, aspects of painting. And it's really making a big difference. It's a lot to take on board when you paint, but you know, um, it's brilliant getting this information and sort of gradually just sort of sieving through it and working out getting your own understanding of how it works and that's what we've that's what I'm trying to do with it as much as possible so thank you keep keep piling in into the comments you know the more people that join in the better I think in my opinion really appreciate it let's get a um, you know and I really think the YouTube plain air community is fantastic so thank you good day Mike good day it was very Australian of me wasn't it <laughs> so um, Mike's got himself a new easel set up he's put it up already um, just uh, have a little walk around before he explains he gives us a bit of a backstory to it very nice oh I'm liking this too yeah it's clever <laughs> <laughs> I was interested in trying to lighten the load mm -hmm. um, and the easel that I was using although the um, the tripod itself was uh, uh, relatively light the the various um, bits that I attached to it made it quite heavy. Um, so uh, I saw this online and um, I thought I'd give it a go. It's quite a flimsy thing, but it does what it says it should do. Yeah, I did pick it up. It is incredibly light. So it, it certainly is light, lightening the load, isn't it? And this is, yeah. this is an interesting addition to um, yeah. To what you had previously, wasn't it? it so, because you were talking about your uh, with the wind blowing and the elastic band, quite yes, yeah, so on your previous. Uh, this, that's right. Um, so, model. with this with this um, uh, tripod arrangement, I've got this uh, clamp at the top, so I can adjust the height. I can move this uh, lower uh, shelf down as uh, well, pretty low actually. So, yeah, I it's can got the big canvas on. Can go quite wide then, can't it? Actually, it's, yeah, it's all. It's all pretty simply made, but it works. Yeah. Um, for how long, I wouldn't like to say, but... Uh, and, you've, and your pallet box setup is the same, it is. except for you've added a bit just to, because the, the poles were a bit thinner at the back, is that? Correct. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. I'm going to be talking about my board in a minute, but you, you've, you're testing something out as well today, something different. Yeah, um, I've used this board before with acrylic paints, and it's been fine. It's foam board, and uh, most artists use it for uh, on mounting systems so they might mount uh, a, a picture on the yes. frame so that it sort of stand it, it jumps out from uh, the backing um, so it's almost it's not it's, is it is, is it is that like a plastic covering over the it top it sort of feels the sized covering with a piece of foam in the middle so it'll so, be interesting to see how oil yeah works on there yeah i don't i don't envisage any problems 
Um, well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mike. Okay. So we're really in a tight spot, to be fair. We're both going to be quite close to each other. Poor Mike's going to have to put up with me nattering all load of nonsense all day. Um, and so I've just literally stepped over, what, one, two, possibly steps across. And I'm just, well, if you've seen any of the videos previously, you'll know me. I like a, a path that leads down to something bright red at the end. Um, so what do you know? I found a phone box down there. And I, that kind of just pulls your eye in. But I also like the fact that I've got the, the cross, but also this uh, cottage in here, which I think is, is nice. And then some nice, some sky in there. I think it's probably, it's a bit of an odd one because I like, I don't want the path to be central, but I don't want it to be right on the edge. So it's probably gonna be somewhere around here. I'm gonna sketch it. I'm gonna photograph it. I'm gonna sketch it. Then I'm gonna get the easel out and we'll just, we'll see where we go from there. So here's my, um, oh, my thumb's just rubbed a bit of it out there, typical. Um, but here's, here's my uh, uh, pending picture um, uh, for the composition. And I'm, I'm sort of drawing away thinking this is complicated. And then um, I turned and looked at Mike's and he's going portrait. And I suddenly thought, why don't I go portrait? So um, I'll snap another picture. And then um, I'm going to rub this one out and try it that way. Let's see how that pans out. So attempt number two, yeah, using a portrait rather than a landscape, uh, I take out quite a bit of the complication of this. I mean, this picture, as always with my sketches, they always look a bit complicated because there's lines everywhere, but basically it's filtering in along here to the red, to the red phone box. Um, and then you've got a bit of the cottage on this one side and then the tree over in through the middle here what i haven't put actually is the the cross there we are. let's put the cross in it'll be about there and then this side is green hedge sort of tilting over and then the clouds and then blue in the sky so well that's the plan <laughs> as always it sounds impressive or not i don't know um i think it's time to get the easel out Uh, so very quickly in the back as usual, got paintbrushes, uh, some some ro uh, toilet paper, well, toilet paper, oh, loo roll, tissue paper. tissue paper. That's it. That's the posh version. Thanks, Mike. Um, and uh, uh, my paint thinner in there, cleaner, um, some liquid, my palette knives, and uh, a bin bag through the middle with one clip today because I seem to have lost the other one. So my colours that I'm going to look at today: ultramarine, um, <laughs> ultramarine white. <laughs> Start again. Titanium white, uh, ultramarine blue, um, cap oh no, I can't even remember, permanent, alizarin crimson, um, uh, cadmium lemon hue, burnt sienna, uh, raw umber um, for the darker colours, but I've also got a little bit of lamp black. Uh, so my board is just a bit of MDF board, which I've given two coats of gesso, and um, yeah, it's an odd shape because it was just a bit of spare board I found in the shed and I thought, do you know what, it was quite, it was a long piece so I've got three of these sort of shapes and I thought, well, I'll cut it out and, and do a landscape but then here we are, I've turned it portrait and I'm going to go down the pathway so uh, I don't know how it's going to go. I'm just interested to see how the oil paint works on board rather than on canvas because it's got a different type of tooth. Um, so it's going to have, and also I don't suppose it'll absorb in in quite the same way as it perhaps does on the canvas. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. So I've marked it in um, using the uh, the wash of black. Uh, lamp black over the top and then actually um, with a bit of paint in a um, just wiping it out and away to, to create the markings um, so now I need to just reconsider where the darkest darks are and I think this is um, 
uh, like going to be a, a sort of a mid range value key today so um, not really dark not really bright just kind of mid range in there so that's what I'm aiming for how goes it Mike hmm, hmm. <laughs> Well, the, the paint seems to be taking to the surface, so that's okay. Oh, that's yeah. Um, Does it? Do you know it's much difference to um, a canvas? Yes, I, I do. I noticed when I was sketching it out using um, what have I got here? A size six brush. I sketched it with some. I used burnt sienna with this brush, and I could I could draw quite easily without. Uh, without any staggering. There's, there's virtually no tooth at all on this surface, so the brush actually goes, runs along the surface quite easily. Almost like the whiteboard pens then, and Absolute, the whiteboard, yeah, yeah, similar sort yeah, of it is. slick feeling. Yeah, so, um, it, so I can be quite loose with it and... Uh, do you find that do better? Quite, do it quite quickly, yeah. Ah, yeah. that's interesting. Uh, so here we are so far I've put in the darks the darkest points really uh, down in here um, the roof across the top there and just this little bit of shade in and here and under this tree which will be a tree at some point um, the lightest points as far as I can tell have pretty much got to be this this part of the cottage here in the clouds in the sky how are things Mike mm. right next to you today Could be better <laughs> okay um, yeah, uh, there's some obvious things that um, I've messed, messed up, uh, but uh, I can sort that out later. I'm gradually sort of getting some sort of definition in. Um, so on with the green next. On with the green. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So this is uh, the war memorial, 1914-1919, um, in honoured memory of the men of the parish who gave their lives for their country in the Great War. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine names on there, but then it also says 1939-1945, and if you come round one side, there's even more names over here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's fairly, and that's the Great War. That's the Navy. Right, okay, so that's the Navy there, the Great War. And on this side are the soldiers from the parish who died, who were in the army. Now, that is an awful lot of people for a small village, for a small area like, like, like Wesley. Of course, they probably would have all gone in together, wouldn't they, as Powell's Battalions? I think that's what they were all called. And um, would have all signed up at the same time and headed in together. One, two, three of the same name there. Probably brothers. One, two of the same name there. Another two there of the same name. Three of the same name there. Whole family's devastated. Crazy. So first bit of the sky in, um, it's basically titanium white and ultramarine blue. Um, but it's interesting because the black's coming through, which is kind of adding this sort of mm, gray uh, sort of, well, I guess it could be cloud. There isn't any of that in the sky, but I, and so I don't know how that's gonna pan out, whether I'm gonna take that away a bit later or, or leave it in. I'm not sure for a minute, I'm just gonna leave it. The liquid is, has thinned it out a little bit. I'm pretty much just gonna put a little bit more in, in along this line here for when I go in later on with the, with the green. And then I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna start to build in from there. So lunchtime done, uh, moving along now, uh, trying to sort of just build in some of the darker tones still get those bits of detail in before uh, moving on to adding in the the greens 
So Mike, you've definitely put a lot more colour in than I have, so <laughs> it's looking lovely. How are you, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? We, are, uh, we don't care too much, <laughs> um, which is probably a good place to be because I should start getting a bit, a bit looser now rather than yeah. keep mucking about with uh, too much detail. Are you doing, because I know you, you said a few times to yourself, stand back. Yeah. Keep standing back and having a look. Are you? Do you feel like you do that enough? Or no, I certainly don't. I don't no, think. Certainly not. Yeah. No. Sort of coming back and having a look. No, it's, um, it's not inspiring at all, really, at the moment. Yeah, there's a few things that I can see I've got really wrong, and that's really uh, uh, bugging me. Yeah. So go on, like. Well, like um, I haven't got the the house proportioned properly it's much larger in, in life than it is yeah. in this composition i'm going to have to do a lot more to the the uh, tree that i see in front of me and to bring that forward a bit so you what to, to make that tree the one behind the cross yes make that more dominant make that more of the dominant feature in the exactly yeah so it's coming along nicely i just noticed I had to catch myself because I was doing individual leaves there for a moment and um, I sort of vowed not to do that. What I'm trying to do is get just more sort of abstract thicker leaves shapes in the picture. I've just got to the stage now where I'm applying paint and thinking you're about to kill it, you're about to kill it, why don't you stop? Uh, so I think, to be honest, it's time for a coffee. All right then, Mike, here we go. Cue music. Cheers. 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 I didn't quite do it at the same time this time. <laughs> So inevitably, if you go to a churchyard, you've got to end up reading some of the gravestones. This one, uh, it's quite interesting. Um, Mike spotted this one. In memory of John Fry of this parish, who was unfortunately scorched in a lime kiln, of which fatal accident he died on the 4th of August, 1817, aged 28 years, leaving a beloved wife and three children to lament his untimely death. Scorched in a lime kiln. And there you go, North Devon's full of lime kilns, and you think, oh, how quaint, how lovely. Clearly not. Now, Mike, what has happened here? <laughs> You've gone abstract. Yeah. It's very nice. I'm back my own way, my own ways. Yeah. What, what was it that kind of took you to that in the end, then? What sent you towards the abstraction well i guess um all those fiddly details and trying to get uh, the house alongside the the cross yeah. right so the cross was a bit of a nuisance as they always are and yeah uh, especially so, at that angle yeah i tried to so i decided to synth synthesize the whole thing that's easy for you to say <laughs> <laughs> and uh I'm happy with that. Yeah, it um, it gives me the sense of this place, and uh, yes, it does. And look, we we were talking about the because you were the, the cottage earlier, and and that you've that it's you've kind of taken that out of the equation a bit more now. Yeah, and it's kind of pulled it together strangely because it was almost like when I said that at that point where you'd lost the the initial darkest darks that you had in place in the blacks, yeah. and once that had gone, it it kind of wasn't anchoring to anything anymore was it no, so no, no it's uh, as an abstract painting that'll do will you will you work on it anymore or do you think no. you'll no <laughs> no I'm, I'm just happy really to leave it like that really 
Isn't it fascinating though, the, the marks that pallet, pallet knives leave? Yeah. It, it does, it really, it really interests me. I, I keep going back to these, I mean, look at that. I keep going back to things like that and looking at them thinking, that's just got so much about it. It's got energy. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating. So I'm going to stop there. Things that haven't quite worked out for me just yet. Uh, certainly this uh, cross in here, I've got to kind of somehow try and bring that out a bit. Really st struggling a little bit with that today. Um, and I haven't actually gone into the path. The path at the moment is still the original color that was there. And to be honest, I'll probably leave it alone. But uh, we'll take it back to the studio and we'll have a look. Okay, so here we are. Here is the finished painting. Um, so, as I sort of planned out, I tried to get the composition to just all feed in here into this lovely little red foam box, that classic thing of mine where it all goes in. And what I've done this time, uh, not I've just noticed actually maybe not quite here, but that's sort of quite strongly yellow. But what I tried to do elsewhere was sort of fade off um, the sharper colour and then drop it in this sort of central zone a little bit more. So this area is where your eye gets strong because that's the strongest patch of colour and then this is a little bit more faded. Does that make sense? I'm not sure that that has worked but that's kind of what I was trying to achieve. The lines, uh, some of the shapes here heading in to uh, this direction where they're all heading in there. And I think your eye does get drawn in pretty quickly into this area here along the path and so on and so on. Am I pleased with it? Yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, there were, there were phases through the development of this painting. I mean, I got back and I fiddled around, fiddling about, fiddling about, and I fiddled about a little bit too much and pretty much went too far. And um, pretty, yeah, so, I, in effect, I've kind of probably pushed it way past the point I should have done. And that's the real problem for me. I never quite know when to stop. I never quite know when to say, that'll do. Um, but I have liked some of the effects that I've got just from wiping away. That's quite nice in here. So these sort of effects, are, you know, again, are just adding to it, working it out, taking it away, putting it back in, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And here's my finished piece for today. You know, it's okay. Um, I probably in the end didn't really get the values right um, because some of it, maybe it's just a bit too dark and too, maybe it's a bit too strong in certain places. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, feedback's always good. Um, so there you go, that's the that's today's video done. Um, let me know what you think. Always uh, appreciate people's comments and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video today and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this or any of my other videos, there are a number of ways you can support me in the future. Like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And now you can even donate on my Buy Me A Coffee page. As you can see from my new videos, I love coffee. But your donation will do more than just keep me full of caffeine. Every donation will go straight into buying new art materials for future projects. So your help will be truly appreciated. It's easy to use. Simply follow the link and you can donate as little as £2 to help out. Feel free to leave a comment and there's even a link to my website. Your support really does go a long way to helping me to create more art in the future. Thanks.